Thank you all for tuning in to the next lesson of the Noster Developer Course, where we are in the midst of building a Reddit client for Noster uh, based on Aaron Cow's wonderful Reddit clone in JavaScript, but replacing the hard-coded events with Noster events. Uh, we've been having a wonderful time, and let's just jump right into uh, the next segment. One of the things that I forgot to do last time was modify these two values. Every post right now says that it was created 10 hours ago and has 875 comments. But those should not be hard-coded values. Those should be um, variables. So I'm going to go and start by showing you how we can fix that right here. Okay. First thing we're going to do is we're going to go into our uh, index.html file, and we're going to go down to uh, the, the creation of the object that we're using to represent our Nostra event. And I'm going to add... Uh, a, a new section to it, a new key value pair. And this one is going to be um, how long ago. So the value of how long ago, uh, let's just set it at for, for now at 10 hours ago. Actually, I will change that to nine so I can see the difference. And then I'm going to pass that into the create entry function. Um, OBJ how long ago. And then inside of the create entry function, which is all the way at the bottom, um, I'm going to use the how long ago field, the how long ago value, to modify this one right here. How long ago. So if I do that and save and refresh the page, we should now see that all of our events say they were created nine hours ago. Okay, so now, we have the ability to modify this variable. So I'm going to use a function that I wrote uh, for Enigma, for my old client, where I also needed to say uh, when, a, uh, when, a, when something was created. So I wrote a little function down here called convert HMS, convert hour, minute, seconds. And this function is a bit of a complex one, but let me put pop it into our code and we'll see what it does. I will put it right here under extract subreddit from event and then I will describe it to you. So it takes as input a number of seconds, let's say a, a thousand seconds. And from that, it uh, finds out how many years that is, how many months that is, how many days that is, how many hours, how many minutes, and how many seconds, which is just the number itself. Uh, and then it creates a string, uh, which is gonna be 10 hours ago or three minutes ago or whatever, based on whichever one of those values is first not a zero. Like if it's zero years, it's not gonna say zero years ago. It's just gonna go with the first one that's not a zero. Uh, and then return that and say, that's how long ago this thing happened. So in order to use this function, convert HMS, uh, all we need to do is subtract the current time from the time when this post was created, and that'll give us how many seconds old that event is. So that's what we'll do. We'll create a variable called uh, var now, and it'll be equal to the current time, which in JavaScript you use with date.now over 1000. And then we will create um, the how long ago is just going to be convert HMS of now minus the events uh, created at timestamp. So if we do that, then in refresh, everything in our event should show when it was created. That one was created three days ago, one day ago, 13 hours ago. Pretty cool. Working with Noster uh, is really great, especially if you've already written a lot of the code weeks ago. So you'll be able to copy this from uh, the GitHub for this uh, project. One, the next thing we're going to do is work on the comment, or is work on the comments count. Because all of these say that they have 875 comments, but currently none of them have that many. So let's go into 875 comments. And this is going to be, let's create a span around it. And we will call this span comments count. Okay. And then we will modify comments count so that it is a variable called uh, comments count. And we will pass that in comments count. Uh, okay, cool. So we have the create entry, then we just need to go to where we call that and add 
uh, a zero to it for now. So if we do that and then refresh, we should see all of the comments now have zero because we haven't counted their actual comments count yet. Uh, all right, so that's good. The next thing I want to do is I want to remove um, the stuff we did at the bottom and shuffle my code around so that I don't have to keep scrolling to the bottom every time I want to modify uh, this, this function, this uh, create entry function. So we no longer need this hard-coded set of entries because we're pulling everything in from Nostra now. We no longer need this function that populates the field based on those hard-coded values because we're doing it we're doing it in another place now. And lastly is this function, which I currently have at the bottom of my document, uh, but I no longer need it there. It's always good if you're modifying if you're writing some script that modifies a part of a document to put it at the bottom because that way it's it's always modifying something above it. Uh, if you t put it at the top and then try to modify something below, that part might not have loaded yet. Um, but in this case, it's fine to have this stuff at the top because we're only doing this after we've reached out and made a connection to our Nostra relay, which happens after the page is loaded. So we're not gonna have the error uh, where you try to modify something that hasn't been loaded yet if we're only doing this after a delay. So therefore, it's fine to take this stuff and move it to the top of the screen so that I don't have to keep on scrolling all the time every time I want to use it. So I will just pop these functions right here. And then these two are pretty important, so I will put them even closer to the top. Right there is a good spot for, um, for both of those. Okay, so that's called refactoring. When you make your code a little bit easier to work with, uh, you refact it's called refactoring, and if we refresh our page, hopefully our refactoring did not cause any errors. Indeed, it did not. Uh, but now we've got a lot of zeros everywhere. We've got zeros as far as what number each of these things have, zero as far as their vote count, zero comments. This is looking like a pretty dead network. So let's fix each of those things. Um, the first one, uh, instead of passing in a zero as the number that each of these items is... Um, uh, is, is, um, has in it, what we'll do instead is we will, uh, we will make the first thing that the create entry, um, the, f the first thing the create entry function will do will be to increment a counter. Uh, so let's create a counter and we will do that right here. Var counter equals starting, we'll start with zero. And every time one of these events comes in, we will uh, we will create we will increment that counter. Counter equals counter plus one. Uh, and now we can use the counter's value instead of uh, instead of what we previously had. So if I refresh now, uh, we got an error. Let's see what our error. Oh no, we didn't. It worked just fine. All of these things are now properly labeled 1, 2, 3, and so forth, all the way down to 20, which is exactly how many I wanted. Great. So that worked. The next thing we should do, I think, uh, is work on making these clickable. Because right now, if I click these things, you know, nothing happens. I don't get anything. And what I would like to happen is I would like for it to take me to the Hello World page where I can see that post and see what whoever it is that wrote this uh, wanted to write there. So, yeah, so let's do that. Um, I'm going to, what I'm gonna need in order to do that is I need to know the post ID because uh, I'm going to have this go to a page uh, where I pull in the content of that post from Noster based on its ID. Therefore, I need to pass in the post ID right here, post ID, and I will make, um, uh, when I call create entry, I will pass in um, I will pass in the event ID, event ID. So let's make sure that worked by create, by console logging uh, the post ID right here. Console log it, post ID, post ID. This is called a sanity check. Most of the time when I write my code, I do a sanity check right after just to make sure that nothing, nothing weird happened. And indeed, I am getting nothing weird. I'm getting exactly what I want, the ID for each of these posts. So now I want to make it so that uh, the, the href element for the title uh, takes us to uh, that 
post instead of just doing nothing. So I'm going to modify this and do str string interpolation is safe here because users can't control uh, can't control what the post ID of their post is. So I will make this say um, equals window dot lo dot ur I will make it go to, the, to a URL and I will specify a new variable up here called URL, which is equal to window dot location dot href plus question mark uh, post equals and post ID. So let's see how that works. Uh, now, if I click Hello World, the title, what it did was it added to my URL post equals and then the post ID, which is exactly what I want. Ooh, but maybe not though, because if I do that again with another one, watch what happens. Okay, that actually, that worked quite well. Uh, but what the problem is this little hashtag right there. If you're going to use a post parameter or a get parameter, rather, uh, you can't have a little hashtag on there because the hashtag signifies that that's the end of the URL. And we actually have something additional in it at this stage. Um, so we need to get rid of that if it's there. The hashtag comes in when you click a link that doesn't do anything. Uh, it adds a hashtag up to the, sometimes it adds a hashtag up to the top of your post. And I don't want that there. So what I'm going to do is uh, modify the URL to say the URL is going to equal this. And then URL is going to add that to it, but not before we have gotten rid of uh, that hashtag if it exists. If URL ends with hashtag uh, URL equals URL substring all of it until um, URL dot index of. Well, actually, we just need the um, we just need the end of it. URL dot length minus one. Save and so if there's a hashtag, it should take uh, it should just re remove it and then give us our post. So let's check if that worked. So populating the information from Noster. If I click Hello World, no, it still added the hashtag on there. So let's um, see what I did wrong here. Console log URL. Refresh, click, okay. So that's what it's doing. Um, so I need this to run when I click it and, um, and not, um, uh, yeah, yeah, actually that should, that should, that should work just fine. Cause the, right now there is, uh, there is no, there is no hashtag at the start of this thing. So if I do enter right there, yeah. This, do, this does work fine. It's just that I already had some, my, my previous, um, what was on there previously from the first time I did it was still there. But now that I fixed it, uh, it won't, it won't do that again. So here we get a post with just, uh, with just that element in there. And then if I click this one, okay, so now it's adding, it's appending it to whatever's already there. So I need it to stop if it sees a, if it sees a question mark as well. So what I can do then is say um, uh, URL equals URL dot substring from zero until uh, URL dot index of question mark. Um, great, that should work. Yeah, so now it changes it every time. It'll just show us the post we have. Um, so, okay, great. Now that we have a post request, uh, a get request that shows, um, shows the ID of the post we want information about, what we can do is we can tell it if this guest get parameter is present, don't populate this screen with every post from Noster, uh, every approved Reddit community post, Reddit style community post, but rather just show the one, just show, you know, the one we clicked. So let's do that. Uh, I will go to... Um, uh, what do I do here? I need to go to the filter. Um, so bar filter. So this filter, uh, is, is pulling in information about all kind 4,550 events and then running them, uh, and, th and then firing off a request to the server about those. 
but I don't need to do that in every case, only if those get parameters are not present. So I need an if statement. If there is no get parameter of post, then do this. Otherwise, We just want, if there is a, po a get parameter of post, then we just want the one that is on there, uh, the one we requested, and we don't need the limit anymore because there's only one post um, of that kind. So this is our filter if we have a get parameter. Um, that way, it's not going to, um, it's not going to incorrectly keep filling this up with uh, all of the posts from Noster instead of just the one we want. The other thing we need to do is um, we need to modify, well, we need this to exist. This object right here uh, is something I took from PHP. The PHP language, whenever it, uh, whenever you have a, um, when you, whenever you have get parameters, it puts them inside an object called dollar sign underscore get. And it's really convenient for grabbing stuff from, uh, from the URL that the user typed in. But JavaScript doesn't have that built in, so we need to create it. So for that, we need to go back to my uh, handy-dandy HTML template where I got the previous dollar sign syntax from jQuery. And just, uh, just like that, we, we now have what we need. So I will put this right under here. And what this snippet of code does, these four lines, is it goes through all of the URL parameters in the, in the URL, takes each one, set, splits it into a key value pair, and then creates an object called dollar underscore get, just like PHP has, and assigns every variable, or it assigns every key value pair to a key value pair in that object. So that we have a dollar sign underscore get object available to us, and we can use it to say, hey, if there's one called post, uh, do this, if the, otherwise, do this. So let's see how that works. Refresh, and indeed, we don't get uh, we don't get the information about every post, uh, which is what we want. But I have not yet coded it to give us information about the one we do want. For a sanity check, let's just make sure that if we go back to the original, it will populate it, and indeed it does with uh, all of this information. Cool. Progress is happening. We can click a post and it will put its information in the URL where we can get information about it. Uh, in fact, we should be getting information uh, uh, from Noster about that event. If I just go console log it, we should see it. So let's do that. Console log the content. No, not the content. Let's console log the whole event. If we do that, indeed, yeah, we see that someone posted a hello world message and we see when it was created, and we can see its tags, which should tell us, for example, what community it was posted in. That one was posted in the Bitcoin community. Cool, this is working. All right, so now that we have that information in our console, let's put it into, um, into our entries. Um, well, let's put it into here, into this white space, which is uh, the entries div. So if, what is the kind on this? Uh, this message is kind one. So if the kind equals one, then what do I want to do? I want to say entries dot push. Uh, I want to push the, the content of this event of this message, event.content. And let's see what that gets us. We got an error because push is not something I can use there. Append is much better. Append the content. So it pulls it in, and in, there it is. Hello world. We've got a hello world, folks, in our uh, in our entries div. We want a little bit more than that. I would like to see who posted this, when they posted it, and uh, the title. Why do I want that? Because if I go over to Reddit, the thing we're trying to emulate here, and I check how it looks when I click a, an entry in here, well, I get to see uh, who posted it. In this case, U Delta. I get to see when they posted it three days ago. I get to see a title, and I get to see a message, so, uh, the content of their message. So all of those things I want to emulate. Let's do it. Uh, we're going to create 
a div bar div equals document create element div div dot inner HTML uh, equals and we'll create a string here that we can interpolate uh, and we will have a few divs inside of it. We'll have a div called um, metadata. We'll have a div called title, uh, but I won't call it title because that's probably already taken. I will change it to post title because that's probably not taken in this document. And we will have one called uh, content or post content because content's probably already taken. Post content, great. Um, uh, and I want to, I want, I want to put information into these things, but I don't want to use string interpolation because that would allow people from Noster to inject HTML into my, um, into my, into the here, which I don't want. So instead, I will do, um, I will do div dot inner, no, div dot get elements by class name, metadata. Get the first one. And inside of it, I will put inner text, which is sanitized. Um, how did they do it? Posted by, posted by, uh, our user, which is event.pubkey.substring 020 for now. Uh, and when they posted it. So for that one, it'll just be convert HMS now minus event dot created at, but I need to create now. Uh, so var now equals math dot floor date dot now over 1000. Save. And that should give us some information about some, some metadata of the user. And then we can append, let's, let's append that and see what we get. Uh, go back to our clone, hit refresh. And we see that we have a post that was made by this user three days ago. We have the metadata. Let's add the title. Similar deal, we don't, uh, post title rather. We don't want, we want to use inner text so that it sanitizes the, uh, the contents of this string for us. And inside of it, we will have, um, uh, we'll have the, we'll extract, we'll use our extract function, extract subject from event, and we'll just pop the event in. Save that. Refresh. And the, we, we have it. There's the, there it is, but it's a little too small. It's a little bit, uh, the title I think should be a bit bigger because on, on, uh, on Reddit, it's a little bit bigger than the rest of the post. So I'm going to modify the CSS of post title, uh, right up here. I'll create a new CSS element, uh, style tag. And I will say dot post con title. What'll it be? How about font size 200%, make it twice as big as normal. We'll do font weight bold, and that should be good. I don't think we need much more than that. Ah, I think we do. It needs a little margin. We'll give it a margin of uh, one rem above and zero um, wide. Great, so now we have a little title right there that this is, this is what the user is viewing. And then we need, the last thing we need here is for the user to, um, to fill in the post content with the content of their, um, of their post, which in this case is the same thing as the title. It's just hello world. So there we go. Uh, now if I go, if I hit back and I go to any of these things, like trying communities at satellite earth and click it, I should see who it was posted by, when it was posted, the title of the post, and the content. That's pretty cool. That's just like how Reddit works. So we're making progress here. We've got, uh, we've populated a, um, we've populated an entries div full of uh, entries from Noster, and any one of the ones we click, we get information about it, including the full post. One of the things we don't have is comments. 
So some of these events have comments about them, and, um, and we're not pulling those in yet. So that's the next thing I would like to do. Um, so this one's interesting. How to submit a new post. I'll bet you that there are people who replied to this. This gentleman posted on, um, I imagine, one of the other Nostr Reddit clients, and he's wondering, um, how, how, do I, how does this work? And I'll bet that the people there replied to him. So this is a good candidate for a post that likely has some replies. So let's go back to our kind equals one here, and we will add a, um, a comments div. Div class equals comments counter. And uh, let's start there. What's going to be in our comments counter? Well, we'll create a span. Class equals how many comments. This is just going to be a number. Start off with it'll be zero. And then the word comments right after. So we'll do that. And there it is. I think it needs to have the same characteristics as the title. So let's go ahead and make it so that comments counter uh, has the same characteristics as post title. So it stands out a little. Okay, so there are currently zero comments, but we haven't counted them yet. How do we count comments? Well, in Noster, comments are the same thing as replies. So ever since Noster was created, it was created to be, you know, a Twitter replacement. Uh, or a starting point for creating a Twitter replacement. So one of the first kinds of events we created was replies, because Twitter's full of those, right? Uh, and we can treat replies to, uh, we can treat re Twitter-like replies as equivalent to Reddit-like comments. So how Twitter-like replies work is that every Nostra post, uh, if you want to make a reply to it, you reference that post in a tag. Uh, you specify the event, and you specify the ID of the event, and then anything you post will be treated as a reply to it. So we'll just do the same thing. Uh, when we go and um, and find this kind one event, we will we will copy the logic for create for creating a request and put it right in here. Create a subscription ID uh, and create a filter where we only want kind one posts. Uh, kind one posts, which are uh, which reference the event in question, which in this case is um, well, yeah, it's actually the it's the post that we want. Okay, so we'll get all replies to it, and then fire off a request for those, uh, and let's just see what happens when we do that. Refresh. Okay, we get quite a bit of information. Um, so I think it's giving us more than we need. So I'm going to undo that send comment. And interesting, I'm not a Reddit user, so its conventions are unfamiliar to me. It seems to be re re recreating a lot of the same stuff over and over. So I think we made a mistake there, and let's fix it. All right, go back to our page, and it should uh, populate it with that. Very good. So what mistake did we make here? I think that we said um, we said to continuously get reply. Every time it gets a new event, it's going to rerun this function and request more of them. So we only want to do that the first time. Only do it once. Only do it uh, if there are if there is no other um, if there is no content in the um, uh, in the in the entries div. Uh, great. So how do we do that? Well, we just do this. Uh, if uh, if post content does not exist, or if the comments counter, we can use that. If there is no comments counter, uh, or no, if there is a comments counter, return. Now it will only do this once, because the first time it runs, it'll create the comments counter, and then it'll run into this, where it'll say, oh, that won't work. I'll have to do that right there. Uh, so it'll create the comments counter, but it won't put it into uh, our entries div. Uh, then it, uh, so it will not, this will not, this 
line will not run, it won't return because there is no comments counter yet, then it will add it to here. And so the next time this runs, after it uh, runs this code, uh, it will stop there because it'll say, okay, now there is a comments counter. So we shouldn't get that endless loop. And good, we did not. Uh, but we do get some more stuff. We get uh, in a community, there's a submit new post button. So we have, we have information that we want that so someone did make a reply to this, but now we want to display that reply. Okay, cool. So, um, so here it is. That's the that is the message, and uh, it is what kind is it? It is a kind one message. So we should see that uh, there should be some code in here that runs, um, but yeah, it never appends it to that div. Okay, cool. Uh, what we can have it do is um, we can run an else. So if there is a comments counter, then uh, then what you should do is that means we, there is a there is a place for us to increment the comments counter. So we should do that. Um, but if there is not, then we should fire off a request. So let's increment the comments counter. Comments counter dot inner text is currently the number zero, right? Oh no, that's how many comments. That one is the one we want. Its inner text is currently zero. So we want to set it to equal what it currently is plus one. That plus one. And this might not be a number. This is actually, I think, a string. So we need to turn it into a number using the number. So let's refresh and see if that worked. Yes, we have four comments counted. And now let's, uh, now let's display them. So in addition to incrementing that, what we should also do is pretty similar to up here. We will create, ooh, actually, we can just do this. Pen them. And that kind of worked. Uh, we do see comments now. We see four comments on this. This person says, good point. Uh, this person says, for Reddit, it can be image type, link type, or text type. This person says, I'm not a Reddit user, so I don't know its conventions. We got some stuff, but it's a little confusing because each one of them is showing how many comments, well, it's showing how many comments it has, which we don't need to know right now. And it's also showing uh, a, a title for each one. So let's um, modify that by saying, um, We'll make a comments div, comment div, and it'll be very similar to this one. But it'll have fewer stuff in it. So we'll make it comment div. Uh, it will still have metadata. It doesn't need a post title. It will have post content. Yeah, that's what the person's replying to. Doesn't need its own comments counter. Uh, and I think for this one, let's put the metadata below it. I think that'll look nice. Uh, so I don't have, so I'll populate the metadata with who posted the comment, the reply, and, um, and when they posted it. And then I will have, um, I don't have the post title anymore. Then the content will be that. Great. Uh, then we just need to post the comment div. Refresh. See what that looks like. Okay, it didn't post the comments div. Um, entries not up oh, because of here. Forgot to do that. Save, refresh, and there we go. We have four comments. One of them is posted by this guy. One of them is posted by this guy, and then one by him. They all need some delineation. So I'm going to add. Um, I'm going to add horizontal lines between each one so that you can see where they all end. That helps, and then we'll add one more under this thing so to delineate the first, so we can identify the first one. Uh, okay. Great, so now whenever we go into one of these things, uh, we can be on the home page, which is right here, and we can click one, and we can view its comments as well as the post itself. So this is looking a little bit more and more like Reddit every single time. I'm excited, guys. Uh, what, what are we missing here? What, is, what do we need to do next? Well, I can tell you one of the things we're missing uh, is that we've got, um, 
uh, we've got a comment counter inside of each post right there that tells us how many comments there are. But we don't have a similar thing right here. So each one of these on the home page says it has zero comments. But then it, when you actually click into it, you see how many there really are. So I think we need to fix that. And then there's another, but there's another piece of low hanging fruit here uh, on Reddit, at least the old Reddit. Uh, all of these things were clickable. Um, like I could click that and go to the post, or I could click this and, and go to the post. I could even click comments and it would go to the post. Uh, but I'm not doing that here. I only have it so you can click the title. So the lowest hanging fruit for us to improve this Reddit client is probably to modify that. Um, let's make it so that uh, you can click multiple things and go to the right post. So I think it is currently href equals, yeah, I'm only putting the URL right there in the title. Let's also put it in the thumbnail. Let's go down to the details and put it in there. And then the comment section. By the way, this no longer needs a hard-coded Boogster SU2 in it. So there's that. Uh, and then last one is comments. So we'll make it so if you click the comments, that'll also take you to the right location. That's some low-hanging fruit. Easily improves the user experience of using this because you can click a bunch of different varieties of things to get to the content you're looking for. Okay, next thing, you can also click that one to go there. Uh, next thing I think we should do is make it so that the comments counter on here uh, is incremented properly. So uh, I'm going to currently we have a create entry function over here, and that is passing in a value of zero uh, for every one of these items. So I think what we will do, uh, I don't think we need to pass that in. So we'll go down to the create entry function, remove the comments count as a hard-coded item, uh, and so that should not break anything. Let's make sure, sanity check, that I didn't break anything by doing that. And I did, comments count is not defined. So I've gotta get rid of that we'll just replace it with zero for now sanity check helped us made it so we don't go further along and then you know ruin some stuff okay so that still works uh we can go in and see the comments now they're all hard coded to zero and i want to change the hard coding so that it gets so that it has a similar counter as to that uh, as to the one on the post page so on the post page we can we could create a div um, that had the comments that had a zero as a starting point. Now we have a an element right here that has a zero as a starting point. Um, but one difference between these two pages is that on this one we only have one thing to deal with. We only have one comments counter, and on this one it's like there's a bunch of them. There's one for every single post. So why don't we uh, make make it so that we can change that? Uh, one thing we can do is we can add a new um, a new uh, variable, uh, not variable, a new class to each of these that's unique for that specific um, entry. And so we'll define it by its post ID because the post ID is unique for each entry. So we'll do that. Now everyone has its own post ID. Uh, and we can go ahead and make it so that uh, so that we request, just like we were doing previously, we request events. Um, for every one of these post IDs. So let's do that. Bar sub ID, just like here. And we will go, uh, and every time we create an entry, we will also uh, request, we will fire off a request for, for kinds of that uh, element, uh, for kinds of that post, for kind one replies to that post. Yeah, that's what we'll do. Great. Uh, but what's going to happen when you do that is it's going to run this function up here. It's going to say, okay, I found a kind one post, which is a reply. So it's going to create, uh, it's going to create an entry for it and populate it. And we only want it to do that um, if it's if it's not on the home page. We want to do that on the post page, but not the home page. So we can say if uh, there is a get parameter of post. That tells us we are on the post page, and you can do all of this stuff. Um, so copy all of that. 
and put it in there. Now, otherwise, what should you do? Uh, let's just console log for now, reply found. So let's do a sanity check, make sure I didn't break anything. So it is indeed remarking that there's a reply found for, I was probably doing that a bunch of times because there's probably a bunch of replies to all these different posts when you add them all up. Uh, and then if I click into one, it should not do that. It should just, yeah, it just populates it with its own three replies. Okay, so we're making it somewhere. Um, it's, it does find a bunch of replies, but we need for each one of those replies, instead of just logging that it found one, it should find the comment counter for uh, for that one. So I need to do count. Um, it's par I need to get its parent. Okay, so what I need to do is I need to find the 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 uh, identifier of the event that this event is a reply to, because that event because um, this event has its own ID, the reply has its own ID, and that ID is not going to be on my page. Uh, only the parent event, only the the posts, the approved posts are on that page. So I need to find out which one it's a reply to. Therefore, I need to get the parent. And I have a function for that. So if I go down here and look at my little snippets of code, I have one called extract parent of reply. Uh, so let me pop that into my code and then show you what it does. I'll pop it right below these other ones that I've used. And then I will tell you how it works. So you pass, just like the, the previous ones that also extract something from an event, you pass in the event you want to extract something from. I'm creating a null parent um, variable. I'm going through all of the tags. And for every tag that is an e-tag, it's, it's referencing an event, uh, I just find the first one and, uh, and then set the parent equal to that because the parent is always the first uh, event being referred to. Uh, and then I return it. And if there is no parent, I say, this isn't, you know, this isn't a reply. This, is, this has no parent. So that's what that function does. And now that I have it, I can go console log. Um, I can go console log it and say, reply found for uh, this um, I, I can I can say which which person I'm replying to. So let's do that and see if it works. Refresh. And indeed, I am seeing that I have found a reply for this one. I found a reply for this one. And they're different, just as I expect. Great. Uh, so now I can go through and find, I can specify that the parent is this. And I would like now to uh, grab the uh, comment counter for that. So count um, parent. And uh, let's go take a look at what that looks like. Because what I want to do now is take this zero right there and increment it by one. So all I got to do is now that I'm grabbing this element, I can get at the inner text, which is a zero, convert that to a number and increment it by one. Count parent inner text equals its current value number there plus one. Save and refresh and check that out. For each one now, we can see this one has three comments, this one has one comment, this one has four comments, uh, and this is pretty cool, guys. If we click one, uh, it goes to it, and then we can see those four comments. All right, so uh, where are we at now? We've got we've got a, a Reddit-like client, a, a Nostra client. We have the ability to see how many, we have the ability to pull in posts from all these different communities. We have the ability to see uh, how many comments they have, and then we can click into them to view uh, the full text of the post, as well as the full text of all their comments. What are, what are some things we can do next to improve this client? Well, I think there are several things. One of the things I would like is if you click one of these subreddits, like uh, you know the NIP172 subreddit community, 
I would like it to get rid of uh, all of this stuff and just show me posts that are in that community. That would be really useful because that's probably why I'm clicking it. I would like to see more from that community. Another low hanging fruit would be um, to work on the uh, work on the pub keys here and make it so that instead of just showing the user's pub key, uh, it shows, you know, it, it makes a query to Noster for their metadata and then pulls that information in. But you know what I think is really important? I think it's important to uh, abandon you at this stage of the of the uh, of the lesson and allow you to continue on your own merits. Because I think I've shown you a lot now. I've shown you how to find a front end for your client. If you're not a front end developer, you can just steal someone else's work with their permission. Uh, I've shown you how to make requests on Noster. I've shown you how to find standards, uh, nip, uh, NIPs that you can use to ensure that your client is interoperable with other people. Uh, and I've shown you how to populate information uh, based on other requests from Noster once you learn what it is you're looking for. Uh, I think I've shown you enough for you to finish this client. I've left you a lot of low-hanging fruit. So how about for your homework, you just go through, find something that you want to make to improve this client with. Uh, maybe it's the vote count. We haven't even done that yet. Maybe it's um maybe it's not doing Reddit. Maybe you or maybe maybe it's creating new posts. The, all of these things you can do now because we've given you the tools to learn how to create posts on Noster, request posts from Noster, and even make a front end that looks like something people might actually want to use. So go forth and do likewise. Make a client that is uh, that matches your preferences. And uh, thank you for taking the Noster development course and watching this latest lesson in it.